We left off at verse 17. And Cain knew his wife, so uh, I've explained uh, what that meant. It was within the family. Uh, so I'm not going to try to justify or explain this line again. And she conceived and bare Enoch. So then she gave birth to a son named Enoch. And he built a city. So Cain built a city. Why? Because he's starting to have a family. He's starting to have a lineage. Now keep reading here. And called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So the name of the city that he built is known as Enoch. But the land where he fled to, the Bible calls it the land of Nod. So this region is known as Nod, but the city is known as Enoch. So don't uh, confuse those two. All right, so in the land of Nod, what, what went on over here? Well, in the land of Nod, Cain was, the Bible says, did not just own a house because he's starting to grow a family. And while growing a family, he's thinking here, I'm going to build my own kingdom, my own religion and civilization. That's what you're going to find out. Now, you might say, really, He's, he intended that. Yeah, throughout this chapter, there is no doubt he wanted to build something. If you recall, so this is how you're going to find out. If you examine every word in Genesis chapter 4, and then compare Scripture with Scripture on that one, and then if you look at uh, Genesis chapter 5, and you compare Scripture with Scripture on that one, and then you notice the context and style of the passage, there is no doubt that Cain, what he was trying to do was trying to build modern century civilization, education, higher academics, the music industry, Hollywood, and everything that you got to mess up today. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Absolutely no doubt about it at all. Now you might say, well, uh, can you show me some passages on that one? Gladly. So look at the following verses. And then we're going to actually see very carefully here that he, was tr that he is undoubtedly repeating what he was doing at Genesis 4. And that his ideology and thinking just totally matches up with today's uh, liberal and one world religion setup. Everything is pretty much the same. All right, now he built a city. That's step one, all right? So if you want to write these down, you can write them down too. That way you can see the pieces building up. That's how you figure it out. So word for word, scripture with scripture, right? So that's how you're going to figure it out there. So first one is he built a city. That's what we read from the passage. He built a city. All right, that is not God's tendency. You might say, Ah, really? Yeah, it is mankind's tendency. Now, it is true that the Lord has a city called Jerusalem, right? So that's a good thing. However, you have to understand here that mankind is in their fallen state. Within a fallen state, if mankind joins together, then what is the tendency? Is the tendency, hey, let's worship the Lord together, or is it evil? It's evil, all right? That's the same thing when you recall Genesis chapter 1. What did God tell Adam and Eve? He intended them to be together, live in harmony. If you look at uh, the scriptures concerning about uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, Paul argued it doesn't matter which nationality you are. We're all one in the blood of Jesus Christ. We're all the same family. In heaven, you have to understand there, there's not going to be different nationalities up there. We're all going to be one together because we are the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what happened to the Christian church. So because the Christian church is designed in that pattern and format, that is the Lord's intention is to be in one and also to be in unity, but because of the fall of man. That's important to understand. Because of the fall of man, the Lord, He could not have them together. He could not have them join hands because the tendency of mankind is to sin. 
That's why you're going to notice when we read Genesis chapter 9 later on that the Lord, He wanted Shem, Ham, and Japheth to actually spread out and to be divided amongst the nations. And then during the New Testament, that's when things have changed. Uh, but uh, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to explain that a little bit more when we come to Genesis 9. Uh, the reason why is what? Because you find out Nimrod, he was there when mankind was one. You find out that mankind, when they're close together, and then they build a city that's like practically next door to each other, in their fallen state and sinful nature, don't you think that they're going to be able to encourage each other? And they're going to learn things they never learned before because they learned it from their neighbor on the sin. So that's why city is a sin. That's why a city is a sin. That's why mankind trying to come together as one world is a sin. That's the reason why originally culture, it's the reason why we had different nationalities and cultures uh, after God started Noah's flood was the intention to divide people so that they don't come together. It wasn't until uh, mankind expanded their civilization, city, and technology, you give bigger opportunity for man to combine. That's the beginning. When Cain built the city, that's why Genesis 6, the whole world, fell into sin. Genesis 4 gave the opportunity. It's a city, civilization, and technology for men to come together. Alright, already opening a mind just from one verse. Wow. Isaiah 8, uh, Isaiah 5, excuse me, Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5. One man learned from history is that yeah, men never learn from, from history. history. That's right. I mean, the beginning, Cain and Abel. We learned a lot already. It was eye-opening concerning about the sacrifices, right? Remember that? See, you can already see Cain's ideology building, uh, getting built that time. So you already noticed that. Cain already had an ideology set up that time. But then uh, it failed. And then Cain, just like a typical liberal, uh, gave the pout and said, well, my, my cultural thinking, uh, my belief is just as good. I don't know why the Lord doesn't bless that. So what do they do? They run away to San Francisco, and then uh, they run away to Berkeley, and then they cry, and then they suck their thumbs, and they say, finally, I find somebody like I do, where I can uh, conjoin city, technology, civilization together with these people to promote my propaganda that just makes people barf, except people like me. Because why? Everybody should be like me because I'm the minority here. And then everybody should follow my sacrifice, my religion, and my system. And people who just don't do that are just bigoted and they're extremists and hey, hey, that's why Cain went off to build a city. You see that now? Went off to build a city so that he can have his own group that he can identify with. Being a minority, because he's already cast off by the majority. You might say the majority, remember the majority civilization that time was Adam and Eve through the Lord. And Cain was afraid that everyone's going to come out after me. He became the minority now and he started San Francisco here. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. You'll notice at verse 8, Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. You notice here the Lord, He does not uh, like a city. Look at verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. He didn't see anything good there. And then verse 8, the city. He doesn't approve of it. Genesis 4 again. Genesis 4. Let's look at other areas here. And unto Enoch was born Irad. So... Uh, Enoch, he gave birth to a child. His name is Irad. And Irad begat Mahujael. So Irad uh, gave birth to uh, Mahujael. 
And Hujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. So that's self-explanatory. Hujael gave birth to Methusael, and Methuselah gave birth to Lamech. So these are the names that uh, Cain that came from the line of Cain. Now, Dr. Rutt, when he mentioned interesting things concerning about these names, and me, I don't know how much of it uh, is true, but so you're going to, ha I encourage you to look it up yourselves to see. Um, oh, it's missing, my notes. I had my notes here. Oh, oh yikes. All right, rats, okay. I guess I can't say it then, okay, but, uh, I guess all I can say is this, is just look up the names of these individuals. If you look up the meaning of their names, it's going to be intensely interesting. It's actually going to relate to uh, something about the belief system of Cain and what God thinks of it. Names are very explanatory and pretty scary. It can actually be sometimes, uh, in my opinion, prophetic and predictive. That's the thing about names, which is intensely interesting. All right, I can't believe that uh, I got rid of that information. So I'm going, I'm just going to have to encourage you to look up the names yourself. All right, there's a Hebrew meaning be behind these names. So look up the definitions and their terms, and then you're going to find something interesting when you connect all the names together. So when you connect all the names together, you're going to see that. All right, so I guess I'll just have to continue on here. So let's look at uh, the other passages. So then what happened when these people start to be born and then they receive these names to give different meanings? They gave their own meaning of their culture and their civilization. The second one, polygamy, fornication, going around with people. Verse 19, And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. So Lamech, uh, he wasn't connect, content with one woman. He said, I might as well sleep around with more. So then he had two separate women. Look at Matthew 19. That is not what God intended. Look at Matthew chapter 19. Look at Matthew chapter 19. But I thought Abraham... I thought that Moses' law allowed polygamy. So I don't understand, Pastor, why you would say that this is not something that God intended and this is like a system of Cain. So what you're going to understand here is that the Lord God, He saw it as something negative. He didn't see it as something good. Why? Because He intended originally one man and one woman. Amen. That's how it was built. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 19, and we'll read verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So at the beginning he intended it to be one man and one woman. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Amen. Now you notice that one man and one woman become one flesh. It's not two or three or four, and then you conjoin into one flesh. Look at verse 6. Wherefore there are no more twain but one flesh, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Amen. So this is what God joined, one man and one woman. But man puts it asunder. They ruin that system. So then the question is given, like typical liberals would ask, because they just like to sleep around with a whole bunch of people. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement? Oh, why didn't Moses say that? Why did Abraham have a bunch of wives, says a bunch of Mormons? Well, I can sleep around with many women, says a typical liberal, or I can sleep around with a bunch of men. Verse 8, He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. See, because the Lord knows that it's now ingrained into the cultural thinking and system, that's why the Lord started to let it go now. It became so ingrained within the people. So it shows the mercy of God. It shows the mercy of God that sometimes God understands that you Christians, you're supposed to live right, but it becomes too much for you. You know, so then out of mercy, sometimes he'll let some things go. 
Notice that God calls this fornication. So the typical liberals today, and yeah, let's include the conservatives too. They all do this now. They think that it's okay to sleep around with a bunch of people as long as I'm not doing polygamy like Cain. So I don't see the, uh, I don't see how my lifestyle is matching with Cain's lifestyle. Look what God said about polygamy. He he matched it with fornication here. The lifestyle of fornication that America and the world is living today. You know what's the shame? The shame is is that I'm a uh, I'm afraid to say this, but I, I hope I'm wrong. But perhaps 70% of you, if not 90%, have committed fornication before. Why? Because I know how the cultural thinking is of this time. You know what you've done? You follow the way of Cain. Look at uh, verse 9. I, and I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth what? Adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. So see, God sees when there's not this one man and one woman system that it becomes adultery itself. How about that? Oh, the Lord's thinking is sure different from yours, isn't he? You know why? You're going by the way of Cain. Jude is so prophetic here. Jude says in the last days they're going to go by the way of Cain. And then people are going to be damned. Why? Because they go by the way of Cain. You're going by Cain's ideology, Cain's worldview, Cain's religion. And you've never changed. No, you never changed at all. You've just uh, repeated a pattern from history. Now, uh, let's read a little bit more here. <laughs> Amen. Let's go back to Genesis 4. Genesis 4. And then we're going to look what else follow along with Cain's uh, pattern and ideology. So first it's a city. Second, it's uh, sleeping around with a bunch of people. And then the third thing is, at verse 20, And Ada bare Jabal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents. So you can tell here that uh, Ada, who came from Lamech, when she gave birth to a son, Jabel, Jabel, he got sick and tired of the city. So because he got sick and tired of San Francisco, he said, let's migrate to Texas. Wow. <laughs> and then Texas is screaming at the city people, don't you dare bring your garbage of California ideology into our terrain. Amen. What men learn from history. Amen. Never learn from history. The Genesis 4, I'm telling you, is repeating the year 2021 and 2022. Wow. And no matter how much technology and greater education you do to try to change your system, you're just repeating the same pattern. Uh, amen! That's the problem with wicked mankind today. When we look at Genesis chapter 4, notice that uh, he, uh, J uh, Jabel, what did he do? He was tired. He was a father of such as dwell in tents. So then he ran away, and he says, uh, I'm going to migrate. And then he's spreading, he's taking his culture of Cain, his ideology and education system from Cain, and then he took it uh, to the country. And then he dwelt in tents. And that's the reason why that your voting system is totally ridiculous now, because uh, there are city people who are dictating the patterns now of people in isolated country regions. People think that California is just filled with city, 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 but you'd be surprised uh, how much in between, when you go from the north to the south, how much empty space there is out there. And if you go further north out of uh, San Francisco, how much uh, country life is over there. And they consist of all sorts of conservative mindset, not liberal. Why? Because that, that's Satan's uh, pattern that he used with Cain, and then it's been very faithful for 6,000 years. Uh, the flawless system, it always works. Now, <clears throat> notice, and of such as have, what did the Bible say? Cattle. Another note here is that he had cattle. So then he started, notice it's not sheep like Abel. Did you notice that there? It's cattle. That's different. Now, with cattle... That's not a good thing because if you know Egypt, they uh, prized cattle and saw them as gods. 
if you know your Bible. Uh, Satan, what is he? Satan, he is known for, go to Genesis 3, he is the serpent, is he not? Being the serpent himself, what did Cain do? All right. Uh, look at Genesis chapter 3. Uh, so I think I messed up uh, my wording here. So what did the devil do? Not Cain. You know. Well, he's of that wicked one, so what's the difference? Genesis chapter 3. Notice the serpent, he is known at verse 14. The Lord God said unto the serpent, Be thou, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all what? Cattle. Cattle. That's the first word he said besides beast of the field. The serpent is within the category of cattle, the Bible says. Uh, did you recall the passages where I showed you concerning that in the book of Ezekiel? I'm not going to go over there. Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10 and Ezekiel 28. When you look at those three chapters, the Bible calls uh, that one of the heads, which is cattle, he called one of the heads of cattle to be cherub. And Satan is known as what? The cherub. So, we can see Satan was trying to start something here. I mean, this is a given when we saw Genesis 4. Satan was trying to do something. He, uh, if you look at Genesis 4, God said that you've got to rule your sin. So, see, Satan was stirring up something in Cain's heart. He was trying to do something. So Satan, it's not just Cain's civilization, it's deeper than that. You have to realize it's the devil. He's starting his system here. So then uh, city, fornication, and then migration by carrying the, their ideology. And then we see cattle. Alright, so I'm going to write these words smaller and smaller now because what I'm going to fill out with a lot of wording here. So Satan system, maybe it could be a religion thing with cattle later on. Let's see. See this thing building up. Because remember, Egypt started to worship cows. Where did they get that idea from? Where do Hindus get the idea from worshiping cows? And that's one of the most ancient religions you can get. All right, let's look at verse 21. And his brother's name was Jubal. So he had a brother named Jubal. So Jabal and Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. So notice that he's the father and the founder of music. Those who do the harp, the organ. Okay, now it becomes very clear. A cherub, Satan, who cherub is known as cow, he is what? A musician. It becomes more clear now. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Do you see a pattern here? Do you see what I see? Alright, Ezekiel chapter 28. There's no doubt. It's following something. It's a satanic pattern. Ezekiel chapter 28. The Bible says at verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. So this is referring to Satan. But look at his specialty at verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Now look at this part. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Look at that. So he was built within a system within to sing music to create music. And that becomes even more plain when you look at Revelation chapter 5, which we won't turn to, but at Revelation 5, the cherubs, they're singing. Cherubims are singing. All right, go back to Genesis 4. Let's look at this more and more and more. This is so fascinating. So fascinating. Genesis 4 is undoubtedly showing Cain's system. Now, music. Six. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain. So notice that Zillah, which is another one of Lamech's wives, 
that she gave birth to a son and it's, uh, his name is Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain, what it means is that would be brought of Cain. Now, that shows the intention here. They had, there is no doubt, this is proof, they had the intention of carrying Cain's system. Cain's ideology. They had that intention. There is no doubt about that. Because that's what it means. That would be brought of Cain. They intend to carry their father's beliefs, desires. How about that? Wow. So now we're pretty convinced here it's carrying Cain's worldview. But just this verse doesn't prove that they're carrying Cain's worldview. It's, uh, you can see that they're carrying the devil's worldview when you go backwards. That we read, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. But let's keep reading. The Bible says, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal-Cain was Naamah. So notice that Tubal-Cain, he became now the founder, the teacher of every artificer that did brass and iron. So, why? Because they need to build their technology, so to speak. So, of course, when I say technology, their technology is not the same as our uh, current technology, but you know what I mean. Basically, they're tools. They're creating something. Why? Because that's what a city does. When you have a city that's combined together, you want to make things more convenient. So you build technology. So that's the reason why you can see that mankind, they never learned their lesson. They're following the way of Cain. Uh, Tubal Cain had a sister, which is self-explanatory. Her name is Nama. Verse 23, And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, so remember Lamech uh, was fornicating, so he had two wives. And then what did he say to Ada and Zillah, his two wives? Look at this, the next part. Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech. So uh, what that means is he wants uh, his wives to hear his voice, to hear what his speech, see he's giving us so notice this is speech here. It's going to do now with poetry here. For I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. So he killed somebody. Why? Well, Cain did it. Why not follow Cain's example? Think about it. I mean, these people who are cast off from the majority civilization, I'm sure they're wondering. So daddy, why can't we go over there? So because I murdered somebody. Why did you murder the person? Because I had every good intention. Because that guy who was lazy, my younger brother was lazy, and I, I could probably say amen to that as an older brother, so <laughs> younger brothers are just lazy, and I lived better than he did, and I listened to mom and dad, and I was the first person that went to church and then did my sacrifice to the Lord, and then I dug up the ground and then worked very hard. My younger brother, you know, laughed at my efforts, didn't recognize what I did was good. And then when he saw my altar at the end and he realized how beautiful it was and how it was admirable to the Lord, then my younger brother finally got right with God. And then he's like, man, Cain is so hardworking. He loved, he's dedicated uh, in his own way to the Lord. But, you know, uh, I realize that I'm just rotten. And I'm wicked. I'm not as smart as Cain. And I'm not as uh, well-designed, cultural thinking, academic like Cain does. So, uh, but I remember this is that what God said was actually Cain's way of doing things is not entirely correct. That I'm just a scum, Abel says, and I just need to rely on the blood of the Lamb. Amen. All right, God, here's the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. And of all things, God accepted Abel. Can you believe that? All he had to do was just kill a sheep, and then he accepted his sacrifice, yeah. but not mine. And then, you know what Abel said to me, son? What is it, Daddy? Abel said, you know, you're gonna, uh, you need to get saved. You, you know, what you did counts for nothing. Good works don't save you. You'll still burn in hell after you die relying on your religion. Bam! Bam! So that's what Cain says. I'm going to... I'm going to hit him. And I murdered him. And so, look at Lamech's thinking here. He, he doesn't see anything wrong. He says, 
He's parading. He's saying, hey, look what I did. I killed somebody. Well, I've slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. So then he, he uh, also uh, killed another person, a young person now. You know, that? Age don't matter in Cain's system. If a young person hurts the liberal ideology of Cain, then he's going to parade on CNN and MSNBC, not just on the Chauvin case and trial, but also a little children who get brainwashed by Trump's system and misinformation all over online. And this is just conspiracy theories. We got to save our children. And uh, if we discipline these children, and you teachers do that in your middle school and elementary schools and your high schools, you teach them, and then you just uh, beat them down, and then you close out their Twitter accounts and etc., then uh, this is something to be proud about. And let's post it on CNN and MSNBC. That's what Lamech did. Hey, newsflash. All right, great news. CNN headlines. I just killed an adult, and not just that, a young child, because they didn't agree with my... You see that? Look at verse 24. There's no doubt about this. If Cain shall... This is really distorted now. Look at this liberal thinking here. The liberal thinking of parading about... Uh, about uh, doing hurt and damage to other people that don't agree with them, that does them hurt, that offends them, because that's what Cain did, he murdered somebody, and then turns it into a religion at verse 24. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, so if Cain gets his vengeance seven times from the Lord, see, that's religious. Why? Did you remember? God told Cain at verse 15, that, hey, I put a mark on you, so uh, what's going to happen? When I put this mark on you, I'm going to take vengeance seven times. So that's the only religion that Cain has that's approved by the Lord. And then he twists it into a way where he can fit with his own ideology. Oh, San Francisco, newsflash, hello, duh. America, that's what America's doing. That's what Catholics are doing, Muslims are doing. And that's what Christians who don't have brain cells in their brains are doing right now. They're trying to find any verse in Scripture and any, any religious belief that they hold on to and then distort it and twist it in a way that would fit with their own ideology. But they just carry it further because Lamech says, truly Lamech 70 and sevenfold. Well, that's hysterical. So he thinks that he's, he deserves more privilege now. Oh, not different from today. There's something that I deserve more privilege compared to my ancestors in slavery a couple a hundred years ago. You people have to make total reparation for my great, great, great ancestor many, uh, many years ago. See, they think they deserve more privilege today than their ancestors did during the days of slavery. And the evidence is, hey, uh, you know, uh, the Ferguson people start to talk to the BLM people. We have our rights to the money too. Why do you have it? We're the ones who started it. You know what the problem with these wicked mankind today is? See, uh, the, the, the idiocy of mankind is that when Cain gets his privilege then the next generation will gain bigger privilege. You know why? The tendency of mankind is to be more spoiled. Right. Yep. Amen. Alright, is this becoming eye-opening or what, man? Amen. Lamech says 70 and 7 fold. Well, that's pretty huge, man. Uh -oh. The Lord didn't go that far. The Lord said, hey, Cain, if somebody does you wrong, then I'll take vengeance seven times. So Cain, he had that privilege there. So notice that wasn't the curse, that was the privilege that the Lord gave to Cain. And then Lamech just abused the privilege where, Oh, I deserve more privilege. I deserve more privilege. Seventy and seven times. Well, is that anything different from today? No, th th nothing's different. Nothing's different today from Genesis 4. And this is now twisted into religion at verse 24. There's no doubt. It's religion, right? Why? Because where did Lamech hear that from? 
from Cain. And Cain, that's his only good religious part that he got from the Lord. That connects to the Lord. Religion is supposed to be that connection that uh, supposedly trying to connect with God. So, you see that. Religion and music now. Seven. Uh, uh, not music, a song. So, singing, poetry, and then eighth is religion. That's what we saw. Now, if you notice Lamech's uh, speech, he called it, right? Notice the rhyming of it. So there was rhyming with it. There was uh, poetic, uh, there was a poetic environment, poetic touch to it. At verse 23 and verse 24. Well, that's what you hear with contemporary music today, right? What they take it now is this uh, privilege, I deserve more privilege, and they carry it now to songs that become a great music hit. And then Taylor Swift thinks, and then all these other musicians think that they're just doing mankind and humanity much good. Try, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, you know, thinks that he's so smart singing, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and blah, blah, blah. You notice that? They, they're repeating a pattern here. Everything mankind does, they haven't changed. Read, uh, read Genesis 4. That's all the chapter you need to understand current society. And read Genesis, uh, Genesis 4 to understand current society. That's all you need is Genesis 4. To understand current thinking of society. And all you have to do is read Genesis 3 to understand individual patterns. Genesis 3 is, uh, is such a psychology on individual human nature. And Genesis 4 is such a psychology on societal human nature. All right, I better continue on, otherwise we're never going to finish. Okay. The evidence now is Exodus. This is evidence. Go to Exodus 32. This is the evidence now. Look at Exodus 32. 32. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 32. Okay, now, in order for you to catch this, look at the wording now. Can we agree this is what we saw so far in Genesis 4, correct? All right, there is no doubt, okay? These words from Genesis 4 undoubtedly match with society taking Cain's things. There's no doubt. Absolutely no doubt. You want evidence? Egypt is evidence. Exodus 32. Now look what... Uh, Aaron says, at verse 4, And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with the graving tool. Oh, that's your technology, right? That Cain does. So I forgot to mention that. So 9 is technology. Remember that one of Cain's lineage's uh, sons was responsible for brass iron, making it all of that. The technology, they were building their technology. Ah, so notice that. Uh, where did uh, Aaron learn that from? Uh, after he had made it a molten calf. Oh, cattle. So I didn't write, oh yeah, there you are. So cattle, you know what's that there? An infatuation with cows. How about that? People have an infatuation with cow when they do this uh, horn symbol with their hands. Like, like kids think that this is a cool thing or something. How about that? And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Oh, you see religion. Cattle worship now. Notice, verse 6, And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings. Oh, just like Cain trying to give out an offering, right? And brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play music. Notice here, that this is no different from today's uh, dancing, contemporary dancing. And that's why Christians, Bible-believers, do not believe in the contemporary form of dancing today. We certainly do not believe in that. Why? Because it has to do with, right here, Cain, what he's doing. There's an, 
there's a sexual inclination in there. Let's look at, oh, verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were what? Naked. When they were uh, singing and dancing. Look at verse 18. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. How about that? Uh, you'll notice uh, other passages where the Bible points out how the children of Israel, that they were just uh, singing, they were dancing, they were doing it just like today. So Egypt is similar to what people are doing today. But Egypt, you have to realize this, that those ideas just don't come out of thin air. Where they learn that from? It's like, look, your kid doesn't, your kid don't say the F word unless the kid learned it from somebody. Where did Egypt learn all that from? Are you blind? Just go to Genesis 4, right? You saw all that. My, 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 my. Eye-opening scripture. Scripture is just incredibly eye-opening. Genesis 4. Genesis 4. There is absolutely no doubt now. Now are you convinced this is all Satan? There's no doubt about that because Exodus 32, that's Satan's worship, worldview, and system, and music. Right? We can all agree Exodus 32 was plainly that. That was just plainly Satan worship, Satan culture, Satan satanic worldview. But this satanic worldview, all the elements, is from Cain at Genesis 4. So people, uh, when they talk about Genesis 4, they might say this as a positive phrase where mankind currently get their civilization and technology and music from. But you've got to realize this is not really positive in Genesis 4. There's no doubt it's entirely negative because all you have to do is look at the pattern here from the scriptures itself and then match it up to see where did Egypt get those ideas from. And all you have to do is just look at current events. There's no doubt. All right, Genesis 4 again. And Adam knew his wife again. So, again, the phrase means that Adam started to sexually know uh, his wife, Eve, again. So then they're give, bringing forth another child now. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. So Eve brought forth, a, uh, gave birth to a son again. His name is Seth. Why? Because Seth... The meaning was, For God said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Meaning that uh, the reason why Seth is named so is because God wanted to set up, appoint and ordain a different seed that replaces Abel's seed for me. So that there is no doubt when we go back to Genesis 4.1. Go to Genesis 4.1, remember? When you go back to Genesis 4.1. You return to Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. That Eve had the intention in mind that the Lord was going to give her a seed. Like God's own lineage, God's own line. Notice that she mistakenly said about Cain, I have gotten a man from the Lord, right? See, so she had that intention in mind. Why? Because don't forget the promise of Genesis 3 and verse 15. If you look at Genesis 3, 15, God gave a promise to Eve, I'm going to give you a seed. So now Seth became the seed from the Lord that Eve was looking at. Now... Let's look at 1 John 3, 1 John 3, and I want you to go to John 8, 1 John 3 and John 8. Now, I have shown you these passages before, but I'm going to now uh, repeat them again to give you a deeper meaning. So why did Cain kill Abel? I've shown you because it just disagrees the pattern of satanic worldview cultural thinking, right? That's a plain answer for that one. But there was also a conspiracy. There was also a conspiracy reason behind it. The intention and the conspiracy is because, remember, the serpent 
part about the promise of the seed at Genesis 3. We looked at that verse, right? Genesis 3, I think it was 15. And God gave a promise to Eve, you're going to have a seed that's going to crush the serpent seed. So then the serpent, he had to create, uh, he had to create his own seed and lineage, but eradicate God's seed and lineage. So when Eve started his, uh, the seed and the bloodline from the Lord, you don't think that Satan is going to try to kill it off immediately? Yeah, he would try to murder from the beginning. He would try to do that so. Oh, we got scriptural proof for that. John 8. See that? John 8. Notice what Jesus Christ warned about the devil. Verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from where? From the beginning. From the beginning. Why, that's Cain and Abel then. Yep. See, he intended to murder. But notice that he's the father of those who follow his lust to murder. So then he got Cain to become his seed now. Uh. So what he did was, now he was able to uh, get Cain to become his seed, and he was able to annihilate God's seed. That devil's clever. You notice the devil's very clever. That from Eve's seed, that, okay, I'm going to take one who will become mine, and now I'm going to get the other one to just wipe it off. You know what Satan's tactic is today? You don't see the conspiracy here. His conspiracy right now is uh, whether you join his system or not, it don't matter. What he's going to do is, one, he's just going to kill you off. Or secondly, he's just going to try to get you on his side. That's what's going on right now, isn't it? They're trying to brainwash you to join their liberal ideology, and if not, then we're going to cane you. We're going to silence you. We're going to ban you from the account and kill your account. Because you just post too much stuff online that's just just doesn't follow with our worldview. Alright, first John three. So Cain became the serpent seed. John chapter three. John chapter three and verse twelve. Not as Cain, notice the Bible says, who was of that wicked one. Uh, first John three. Uh, did I say John? Sorry. First John three and verse twelve. The Bible says, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. See, so he belongs to the seed of the serpent now. And slew his brother. But notice, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. He gives a deeper indication here. Is that he didn't become Satan's seed by killing Abel. It was long before that. He was already of the wicked one. Because John 8 said, when, you, when your father's the devil, you follow his lust to kill. So notice here that it's not because he killed that he was the child of the devil. It's because before that. Verse 12 says, Wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. See that? So it was long before he killed Abel that he was uh, of the devil's seed. Let's go back to Genesis 4. Genesis 4. So that's the conspiracy. There's no doubt here. Eve recognized it too. Eve recognized that God plan was to create a seed, but then it was dismantled uh, by the devil, the serpent, and Cain. So then Eve recognized the Lord setting up another seed now. And that's through, through Seth. Verse 26, and to Seth, to him also there was born a son. So Seth, he also gave birth to a child, and you can tell where he uh, get, the, uh, get his wife from. It's the same thing like Cain did. So I'm not going to explain that again. And he called his name Enos. So I just find it interesting that uh, he called his son Enos and then Cain called his son Enoch. So that was just a strange reason for that one. Now Enos, it actually means moral man. Moral man, which is intensely interesting. It means moral man. Why? Because perhaps Seth, uh, he believed in that there's going to have to be morals now. Because with Cain, he, didn't, uh, he has his own morals and logic. So I have to start my seed that would, uh, a conflict, be different from Cain's own morals and ideology and system. Now this is very interesting. The last part reads, Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So then after that, what does that mean? That means that because a new seed was starting out, 
and remember Cain's seed was already starting, that's what it means is that now we've got mankind, we, now we have a human race, so to speak, that can call upon God. And calling upon God means prayer. But I'm going to, sh uh, there's something very interesting behind that. It's uh, throughout the entire time of Cain's civilization, before Noah's flood, it was not poly, it, there was no such thing as idolatry. It wasn't uh, where you had uh, many different gods where they have idols. It was monotheism. One God. So just because, so remember that verses mankind start to call upon God. So call upon means pray to worship. So that means there that, uh, wait a minute, remember all of mankind, they weren't calling upon the Lord in the right way. They were drowned out by the flood. Mankind in general, when they, so then when they were calling upon the name of the Lord, they were doing it their own way then. Cain's satanic civilization agenda behind this phrase, which I will cover next chance to study. Okay, so I won't do it on this one. Okay, let's expound that. Men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Let's expound that a little bit more. Some interesting things behind that. All right, I hope that you learned a lot from Cain's civilization and worldview. Amen. Don't follow that pattern. God, my Father, I pray that you'll dismiss us now with your blessing. Thank you so much for the truth of your word. How enlightening, Lord. How eye-opening. We can never learn from that, Heavenly Father, because we're just too stupid. Mankind follows the ways of Cain. And a deeper insidious working behind it, the ways of the devil. Help us to not follow that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.